We are a tiny dot in this universe, among the stars and other celestial bodies. Birth, life and death are constants not only for mankind and other creatures on Earth, but also for the million celestial bodies in the vast universe. We exist because the universe exists. But are we alone? Are we the only planet with life? Do we have an expiry date? The study of the universe through astrophysics and the quest for discovery is a very interesting and important subject for the existence of our planet. Through this journey, let us seek answers. The Indian Institute of Astrophysics is dedicated to research in astronomy, astrophysics and related fields. To begin with, I must tell you why should we study astronomy and astrophysics. We, mankind started looking at the stars for their survival for two reasons, uh, to find time and also to find direction. If you want to go from one place to the other, you need to know the direction. Daytime sun guides you. In the night, you need to look up at the sky and know your stars to find out where you're going and how you're going. So, especially regarding uh, navigation and uh, ocean, you don't have any direction, sense of direction. So people used to know their stars then, but things are different now. Who tells you the direction now? Of course you, you use GPS. But how does that work? There's a constellation of satellites that can position you and tell you where you are. But then, for the satellites to tell you where they are, they themselves need to look at quasars, which are very far away. Quasars are massive and extremely remote celestial bodies emitting large amounts of energy. They contain massive black holes. Their study is crucial to understanding the early universe. Astronomy and astrophysics is still relevant for the day-to-day -day life for everyone on Earth. Institute is, as it stands now as Indian Institute of Astrophysics, is 50 years old and we are embarking into the next half century of development and research. The Institute began its journey as a Madras Observatory in 1870s and there were several observations of the Sun during the total solar eclipse. So therefore, a dedicated committee was assigned to set up an observatory in the southern part of India and Kodaikanal was identified as the site to establish. So in 1971, Kodaikanal Observatory became Indian Institute of Astrophysics with its headquarters in Bangalore. Because of the advantage of the location, we can observe southern and the northern objects at Kavalur. So at Kavalur, we have indigenously built a 2.3 meter telescope, which got commissioned in 1986 as a national facility. So at observatory, we have various kinds of studies, ranging from solar system objects, variable stars, 
galaxies, novae, supernovae, and other uh, topics. Similarly, students are also will be trained uh, for uh, doing their project as part of their coursework. The Indian Institute of Astrophysics PhD program is a full-time research program wherein the students work towards their PhD degree under the supervision of an IIA faculty. The objective of this program is to train young astronomers, scientists and engineers who can build astronomy instruments and astronomy systems which can be used in space. I know the best thing about IIA is that here everyone knows everyone. So it's like you know which person is working on what and uh, if you have an administration issue we know uh, specifically which person you have to meet so uh, life uh, becomes quite easy here though astrophysics is a uh, very specific field of research still it's quite diverse so we have people uh, who are working on theory of black holes and binary stars and uh, we have people who are working in cosmology and large scale structures we have people who are observing exoplanets and galaxies and we have people like me who is working in instrumentation. So we use fundamental physics to understand various orbits around black holes and how we can understand uh, various observational facts about black holes using this fundamental physics. And IEA has provided a very good environment, research environment, uh, where we have provided with a very good computation facility, very good accommodation facility. IA Library is one of the oldest yet modern astronomy library in the world. We have even a written catalog from 1794. Our collections are mostly related to astronomy and astrophysics. The library of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics is more than 200 years old. Since then, the library has been continuously acquiring astronomical literature in the form of books, journals, and catalogues, and today it can boast of housing the largest collection in astronomy in the country. The library provides the Indian Institute of Astrophysics faculty, students, and visiting scholars from around the globe with ready access to complete collections of print and online astronomy resources. With 20,000 volumes of books, and approximately 78 active serial titles. The breadth of the collection is exceptional. Special strengths of the collection include materials on observational astronomy and theoretical physics and astrophysics, and back volumes of many core journals from 1794. And uh, we get very good uh, uh, financial help. Uh, so that we can attend various conferences, national or international. Uh, so during my PhD, I have attended uh, at least uh, five or six conferences where I got to interact with different scientists and learn from them. And this has been a very good opportunity to learn how to do research and uh, how to uh, pursue in the future. And I would like to continue in the black hole astrophysics and learn more, explore more in the future. Apart from the research, uh, I think we are quite a bunch of very, you know, uh, responsible and uh, talented individuals. We do outreach programs where we go to other schools and we teach the children like what physics are all about and inspire them. Uh, we play a lot of sports on campus and in our hostel we conduct lots of uh, cultural events uh, where we come along and we dance, we sing, we play music and we have a lot of fun. In the early 90s, it was very strongly felt that uh, you know, we need a new location, another observatory, uh, because Kavlur was, you know, the light pollution around Kavlur was increasing, the village was expanding, and also the number of clear nights were decreasing because of the change in the weather globally. So in the early 90s, um, we set out to look for uh, new sites and uh, we were looking out for new sites in the, in the Himalayan range. Uh, the mid-90s, uh, there were about six teams which went out looking for various locations, about six to seven locations in the Himalayan range. And that is how the site in Hanle was um, identified. 
In 1996, it was decided that Hanley was the best site for an observatory. The cloudless skies and the low atmospheric water vapor make it one of the best sites in the world. Situated at 14,800 feet, the site is deemed to be excellent for visible, infrared, submillimeter, and millimeter wavelengths. In addition, there are low ambient temperatures, low humidity, low concentration of atmospheric aerosols, low atmospheric water vapor, dark nights, and low pollution. The observatory has two active telescopes. These are the 2.01 meter optical infrared Himalayan Chandra telescope and a high altitude gamma ray telescope, HAGA. The HCT is remotely operated from CREST, the Center for Research and Education in Science and Technology, Bangalore. Because of the remoteness of the place, there was, uh, you know, the connectivity was, was a big problem. Now, how do we connect? You know, Hanle is a very high altitude site. It is located at 4,500 meters. Not everybody can go there and stay there for very long hours for observation. So we wanted to do it in such a manner that we could actually observe remotely. You know, people, the observer could sit right here in the comfort of a place like Bangalore, but still observe from an excellent site like um, Hanley. So now what is that, this telescope which is in Hanley, uh, it, it has all set up with all instrument and all, and we have a small uh, set up of computers here. So both, both are networked with satellite. Uh, uh, with Indian communication satellite um, and the astronomer who, who, who has been allotted time on the telescope, they don't go to Henley. They come here and they observe from here. So every operation of any astronomer needs to do with the sky using that telescope, that can be performed from here. He can, we can move the telescope from here and we can uh, tackle the instrument from here and we can get the data immediately displayed on the camera, we can focus every, any, whatever an astronomer need, it can be performed from here. So this way, this center was initially uh, came with this remote operation. You know, if you, if I want to talk about the various science that is being done with this telescope, we have been observing objects all the way from the solar system objects to some of the, you know, distant uh, quasars and uh, the active galactic um, uh, sources. The other area where uh, the HCT is being contributing very significantly is in time domain astronomy. And this is basically the study of what we call as the transient sources or the variable sources. Talking about the transient sources, some of the very interesting sources are the supernovae. The supernova is an event which basically signifies the death of a star. So like human beings, like anything that we know, even the stars are born and they die. Now they can either have a very quiet death, which is what we expect out of an object like our sun, or they can have a very explosive death, you know, a very shining event. And that is what happens when you have a supernova. So these are really massive stars, and when they die, they don't die quietly. They create a lot of, let's say, something like a noise, okay? But this noise is primarily in the form of 
light. And this, the study of supernovae is something which is, it's very significant with the Himalayan Chandra telescope. And uh, the main advantage that we have with the Himalayan Chandra telescope when we study supernovae is that we can cover these objects for a fairly long time. And uh, we are restricting to supernovae which are closer to us and we are not looking at the most distant objects, but the study of supernovae, the detailed study of supernovae which are closer to us is extremely important because this helps us in identifying and understanding the objects which are distant and far away from us. And uh, we have an observatory up in space because the UV uh, rays cannot penetrate through the ozone layer to the surface and to the ground. So if you want to study the celestial objects with a wavelengths other than that reaching the Earth, you have to go above the atmosphere. So we have set that up and this is part of the AstroSat multi-wavelength observatory and the UV imaging telescope is uh, uh, actually delivered by this institute in collaboration with other institutes in the country as well as abroad. Professor M.G. Kamenan Laboratory for Space Sciences is only one of its kind in the country which meets all the requirements of building any space-based astronomy instrument. And uh, since 2000, we said, uh, why not we build some uh, uh, telescopes uh, which uh, can be put in space. And as of now, once one can see here inside when we go through the facility, it meets all the international standards for building any space-based astronomy instrument. Clean room suits have to be worn to enter the laboratory, which meets the molecular control protocols. It is a clean room facility and is classified as ISO class 6, which is where a lot of structure metrology work is done. And the class 10,000 area, where there is a vacuum calibration facility, the molecular contamination facility, and the scatter measurement facility. And then, the class 1000 area, where there are very sophisticated measurement systems, like the profilometers and the interferometers. And the ultimate sanctum sanctorum facility is class 10, which means that a particle size of 10 particles in the cubic meter of air form 0.7 micron to 5 microns. That's the level of cleanliness that the laboratory has today. The institute collaborates with institutions like ISRO and IUPA and many others, where teams from all over come and contribute to the mission. But primarily, the mission is conceived and completed by IIA, after which they embarked on a complex solar mission called Aditya. Aditya in Sanskrit means sun. This mission is to primarily study our own sun and its dynamics and its energetics. The institute is building another instrument which is very complex called Visible Emission Line Chronograph which studies the corona of the sun. Currently, the IIA is designing, building and calibrating this instrument. This facility cannot be shut down even for one single minute because optics, the detector system, shall stop functioning and the contamination protocol will be violated. From 2005 till today, the system has not been shut down even for one minute because that is the space requirement. And any space instrument that is built here has to go through calibration protocol, which means that the entire instrument has to be calibrated in vacuum and made sure that it performs the way it is expected to perform in space. That's the level of activity that goes on here. This wouldn't be possible without the help of telescopes. Telescopes have come a long way. From 1608, when an instrument was invented to see faraway things as if they were nearby, to the versatile Hubble Space Telescope, with the help of which we can see stars being born and dying. Today, scientists are working on a 30-meter telescope that will be capable of maybe detecting extraterrestrial life. So, uh, almost like 10 years ago, uh, I moved from uh, University of uh, Texas, Austin, and then we found uh, lack of uh, 
lack of facilities for top top notch facilities for uh, observing uh, compared to international facilities what we have so we thought so we collected a number of people here uh, within india so see what we can do whether we can build our own intermediate telescopes which is now 10 meter class telescopes or we can participate uh, international uh, projects so that we can have a, a quantum gem from currently we have some 2 meter class telescopes and then going to 30 meter telescopes they like a quantum gem for india the 30 meter uh, telescope uh, as the name itself uh, suggests it is uh, it is a very large telescope with a primary mirror which is 30 meters in diameter and because it is such a large mirror, you cannot have a single mirror of that size. So it is made up of several segments. Uh, in fact, it is made up of 492 segments. Each segment is a hexagon of a uh, size of 1.44 meters. Each segment is mounted on its support system and uh, all these segments are aligned together to behave like a single mirror of 30 meter diameter. So it is very important that you keep all the segments alive in a perfect shape so that it behaves like a single mirror and it gives you extremely sharp um, images. So together we are doing quite a lot of these systems. Then apart from that, we are also doing the segments itself because that is a complete new technology which we are having in India. That is a stress mirror polishing technology. And every country wants that technology, they want to do themselves. They want, everybody wants to do. So the, what the project thought is, okay, since everybody wanted to do, the, do this, so let us split these uh, segments across the partners so that everyone can do uh, proportional to their share in the project. There's no company in India to do this. So the IA itself, the Institute of Astrophysics in Bangalore itself has taken up on its own. And then we are building our state-of-the-art uh, optics lab which is an international class, a huge one, uh, which is around 40 kilometers from here, the Muscote place, the Crest campus. Inspecting the blanks, making sure that they are as per the required uh, specification, uh, grinding them, polishing them, and then you know cutting it into hexagon and mounting it on its own support assembly. The entire process will happen in this uh, uh, building. This is a building which is going to be a unique facility in the country, one of its kind for uh, you know, polishing large optics. Currently, we don't really have such a facility in the country. And this is going to be a state-of-the-art uh, facility which can be used even beyond the 30-meter uh, telescope project, not just for astronomical purposes. In fact, this facility uh, can be used for uh, you know, polishing mirrors for space programs. And uh, indeed, ISRO has uh, shown interest in uh, uh, you know, utilizing this uh, facility when it is um, available. Uh, you would have realized that the USP of this institute is all aspects of astrophysics covered. And since we develop and maintain and continue to operate these observatories, we have a good uh, experienced team in engineering and development on all aspects of operations and setting up of observatories, including mechanical to electronics to computer science, etc. And uh, the researchers in, uh, involved in all sorts of uh, each area of astrophysics and we, we have expertise in large. So students who come here gain this particular uh, aspect that we are not having a narrow focused research but very, very broad spectrum research so they get to know more about uh, uh, the whole aspect of astrophysics, very broad uh, foundation including astronomical instrumentation. So that is the uh, uh, unique aspect of uh, Astro Indian Institute of Astrophysics. The Department of Science and Technology is completing 50 glorious years in the service of the nation through science and technology. This journey of relevance and excellence has not been a solitary one. All our autonomous organizations have played a critical role in driving forth with quality and focus and speed in their respective areas. They have excelled in their pursuits. I wish all the autonomous organizations and their scientists 
a very successful future. The future is coming at us at faster and faster speeds. I'm sure you'll be fully prepared to meet the challenges and create new opportunities and work for an Atmirbha Bharat that can be proud of its S&T depth and spread.